everyone, it's Melanie Ham. Welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm gonna to teach you how to make the log cabin quilt block, the way that I kinda of like to do it. Here's an example of one of the quilts that I have made in the past. I'm gonna be showing you a different example of a different colorway today. If you wanna learn how to make this exact quilt, um, exactly how I did it, all the free motion, start to finish, how I did this entire quilt, you can visit my premium course site, which is babylogcabin.com, and the details will all be there for how to make this entire quilt. But today's video, I'm gonna show you how to do the block. So I'll teach you all of that for free here on YouTube. Oh, if you want to sign up for the course, I would love to have you over there. Use the code LOGCABIN, for a limited time and you can get five dollars off so i'll have all the details linked down below uh, so that you can take advantage of that if you're interested let's jump into the tutorial i'm going to show you how to make this super easy log cabin block so today i'm going to show you how i build out this block again you can go to babylogcabin.com if you're interested in learning how to make this full quilt start to finish all of the free motion quilting tutorial everything is on there but today i want to show you how to build the block so this is how you do it this is a really, really easy way of utilizing your jelly roll to create a super fast quilt block. So what you need is a six and a half inch center square. This doesn't have to be a six and a half inch square, but that's what I used. I like having this larger piece. You can fussy cut a piece of fabric and have a really cool motif here in the center. I am gonna be using this kind of like wolf face uh, print that I had in my stash. This jelly roll, um, it's Riley Blake High Adventure that I bought online. Jelly rolls are really, really great. And this is gonna work up so, so quickly. If you don't have a jelly roll that you wanna use and you have some yardage that you wanna use, you can certainly do this that way and you would need to cut two and a half inch strips from your yardage and you can totally do that as well. So you can see here in my example, we have our center square and then we're gonna start building it out one strip at a time. And I do all of this at my sewing machine. So we are not gonna be getting up and down, up and down, up and down to build out this block. So it's pretty cool, really fast. Thing that, the thing to keep in mind is if you have any prints that are directional, most of these prints are not. This one, for example, would be directional. So you want to keep those in mind and as you're building it out, have a top and a bottom to make sure that everything is facing the right direction. If that matters to you, it may not matter to you. The other thing to keep in mind is you want to have lots of contrast within your block. So this would be the first strip that we start with and then we're going to basically just go around. And we'll do three layers of jelly rolls to create our one big large block. Now, so this and this and this, they're all high contrast so that we can really see that and it ends up being very dynamic. Okay, so that's the thing to kind of keep in mind as you're building it out. The first one, so since this is a brown center, I'm gonna probably start here with one of the reds. Since there are some other fabrics here that have some brown, so we'll utilize the browner prints in the second and third layer of our jelly roll. So you grab your strip, Leave the selvage on, don't even worry about cutting that off. We're gonna line it up. Just have your selvage edge coming up off the top. We're right sides together. And then we're gonna take it over to the sewing machine and sew a quarter inch. I wanna show you guys, this is a pinked edge. So some of the jelly rolls look a little bit different. This jelly roll has a pinked edge, meaning it has this zigzag. You are going to line everything up from the edge of the zigzag. So from the outer spot, not from the inner spot. So do you see the difference on that? You want to be doing this from the edge. That's going to create um, the proper sizing. If you didn't do that and you did that in another, in another project, don't worry. As long as you're keeping it consistent. And if you are using the inside zig, from the zag, <laughs> then um, just keep that consistent going all the way through. But that is the proper measurement for the jelly roll is to use the outside of the fabric cut. So let's head over to the sewing machine and I'm gonna show you how to stitch down this first strip. So when you are quilting, you always wanna use a quarter inch seam allowance. So find that marking on your sewing machine and use a 
uh, thread that is kind of coordinating with your print. When in doubt, use a pale dove gray like this because that goes with almost everything. Line everything up, quarter inch mark, and sew all the way down just to the edge. When you reach the edge, you want to stop, cut your threads. Now I want you to flip it over so that you see the roll here, the jelly roll. Have a pair of scissors at your sewing desk so that you can do this easily. And we're going to cut. So don't need to get up from your table. Super easy. We can set this aside for another time. You can uh, cut the other side if you want to. A nice sharp pair of scissors is really handy for this. Now you're gonna flip it over and finger press. So that's gonna mean we have our center square on the bottom and our jelly roll strip up here. And we're gonna finger press this. All right, now no need to go to the ironing board. We are just gonna pick another strip and do the same thing starting from up here for the next row. Okay, so we have our jelly roll that we just did on the top. Our new strip, right sides together. Make sure the selvage is coming up off the top and line that up going all the way down. Quarter inch seam. your threads do the same thing flip it over and cut do your best we aren't going to do the whole block like this we are going to do the first round and then we will get up and check everything and make sure that we can make any minor adjustments and press it really well this is sort of just to make the process faster uh, so each we'll do each round at the sewing table all right, so again, we have this in front of us, our new strip, finger press. Just run your fingers along the seam to kind of give it a, a little rough press because we'll use the iron later. And now find your next strip. Finger press. Now we're gonna do our last strip, which needs to include, of course, these strips that we have already added. So this will be the longest one. The seam that we finger pressed should be facing the outside of the block. So the seam should be laying on the strip side. It's okay if those last ones are a little bit rougher because we're gonna square everything up with our rulers. Finger press. So now we've got our first round of jelly roll strips in place. Now we're gonna go over to the ironing board and press everything and make sure our corners are nice and straight and finish trimming anything up before we do our next round. So now we wanna give it a good press. And again, the seams should be laying on the strip side, so it should be going outward. That's just kind of a rule to keep consistent, you know, throughout the entire block. All right, let's take a look. The main thing is we wanna have 90 degree angles. Okay, so all of our angles need to be 90 degrees. A lots of different rulers will work for this. Square rulers are nice because you can line it up accurately going down as far as possible. Again, remember you wanna measure from the outside of that pinked edge. 
So I know I've got this side and this side lined up and then I can use my rotary cutter to cut that off. You wanna go around and double check that on all of the corners. So make sure that all of our corners here are a 90 degree angle. So I want you to check it out even if you've already cut it because there might be some minor adjustments. Like there's just one little bit here. And those little adjustments can add up over the entire course of the block. So that's why you wanna double check it. And that one looks good. Now this right hand side is where we started and we're gonna do the exact same thing and follow the exact same method going all the way around. The blue arrow down here, then let's see what would be over here. Maybe this red plaid, it's Aztec print. When you're done with this round of it, with these four strips, we need to iron and trim them again. So go ahead and sew these around and then I will meet you back at the ironing board. So press, trim or and square, trim and square. Both, both are done in that, in that step. If you skip any of these steps, you run the risk of having a wonky block and then it will be a little bit difficult to put together with your other blocks, you know, if you decide to make a full-size quilt out of this exact method. So again, let's pick our next round of strips. Do the exact same thing. Remember that the, the strips you've already used are gonna be getting shorter. So at some point you won't be able to use them anymore and they'll have to go in the scrap bin or you'll have to just use them for something later on. So same thing, press it, square it, and then you've got your nice good size modern log cabin baby block complete. Happy sewing.